I'm Patrick Bailey with whiteboardcoder.com. Today is March 29th, 2016. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use FontForge to tweak a font so you can actually use it in your SIGWIN prompt. Okay, first thing, let's download FontForge. So you can head over here to fontforge.github.io and download the Windows install, which I don't know if FontForge is available for the Mac or not, but I want the SIGWIN. But FontForge allows you to tweak fonts. So I'll just download here and click download. And there we go. It should take a few seconds to download. Now the peculiar thing, Sigwin seems to be kind of its own beast. Um, now typically when you're doing command line stuff, you need monospaced text, which means each character has the same amount of space, so things line up very well. Uh, and Sigwin needs that, but also it seems kind of finicky. So I have monospaced text that doesn't work in Sigwin. Or doesn't seem to. So there's a few more steps uh, where you could take a monospace font and tweak it a little bit and have it work. Or you can actually, I was doing some tests earlier today, you can take any kind of font and tweak it and have it work. And let's see if this is almost downloaded. Oh, another thing, we need a font to test. Plenty of font sites out there. Uh, I found this one, 1001fonts.com. Just picked it out of the air when I was searching. And I did this earlier, but let me go try a different font I've never tried. So here uh, on Comic, I found this Spider-Man Spider font. So I'm going to see if I can get that to work. Uh, now with these, some of these, uh, you have to figure out what the font is. If it costs money, if you can use it for free or, or whatnot. So, you know, follow whatever rules they have. Let me go download this font. And... Find that, stick that on the desktop here. And it looks like my FontForge is downloaded. So FontForge installation is pretty easy. You know, click on it, run. Click OK, next. Accept the license. Next, 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 next. And you can create a desktop icon if you want. Click next and install it. Should go pretty quick. And let me open up this zip file and see what fonts I have in here. Oh, there's only one, so that works. So I'll just grab that, pull it out of the zip file and stick it on my desktop. And click finish, which also launches. So I'll launch uh, FontForge for now. Okay, where are you? There we go. So there we go. So we've got the font we want. We've got font, for, font Forge installed too, so I can actually tweak the fonts. So next, I'm going to go prove that this current font I downloaded doesn't work in Sigwin, and then set about the task of actually tweaking the font so I can get it, force it to work. Okay, let me prove this is not going to work in Sigwin. So what I can do, I can open up this, go to my C drive, Go to Windows, and there should be a Fonts folder. There it is. And so now I can drag this font in, just drop it, and it should accept it, and it should start working. Let me see if I can search for Spider. Oh, it's not Spider. It's H O M O. There we go. Uh, and now I can use this in. Microsoft Word or whatever I want to use it in, it'll work just fine. But chances are it's not going to work in Sigwin. So let me close Sigwin, make sure my Sigwins are closed, open a new one, right click, uh, go to options, uh, go to text, and then select what font I want. And um, chances are it's not going to be listed. Nope, it's not listed. Because it's not monospace, not a lot of things, which is not going to work yet. So let me kill all that and close the terminal. And also let me go here and delete this version because I don't want this in my fonts folder. I've had problems updating in the past, so I just want to delete it. So now let's go to FontForge. You have to go actually find this guy. So go to your base directory, uh, open up the desktop, and then there it is. And click OK. And that should open this font. 
Now, one thing I want to do is I actually use some weird Unicode com characters in my terminal. So I'm actually going to update it so it actually has those in here. So what I'll do is I'll open up another font that I have that actually has the Unicode characters that I want. And so I can go down here and go to C, let's see, go to Windows, go to Fonts. And I should have a Sans typewriter in here, right? It's the one I usually use. Maybe I should have copied it over to another place. For some reason, they're named funny in here. Might not be the right one. Hmm. Let me look up Sans. See what it's actually called. Lucidia. Oh, yeah, about Lucidia. There we go. Yeah, let's see, is it zero one? Yeah, underscore zero in my case. So I'll just open that guy up. And in my case, I can go view, go to, and I can put in the actual Unicode character I want to see. It's U plus uh, 27, 6F, I think. And that should jump to it. Yep, there it is. And so that's a character I've made. And I want to make sure it gets in this one just because otherwise it's going to look funny the way I do my command line. So go to U plus 276F. And so I could click on this and actually draw the thing out. But it's easy enough to go down here, right click, copy, and paste. Oh, and you can see these fonts are very different sizes. So that looks pretty huge on there. So I may need to go tweak that. Let me tweak it. I'll come back to that in a second. Okay, so now if I go look at some of these, I'll double click on them, opens them up, and you can kind of see the sizes on them. So this one's 977, and that's important because you kind of have to figure out. I don't know if there's a button here. If someone knows, tell me or post it in the show note. Post it below. I don't know if there's a something I can press that'll give me what what the maximum font width is. Cause that's actually what I want. What's the biggest font width? Because I want to set them all to that, which may look funny, but it will make them mono-spaced. Uh, this X looks big. I'm sure there's a better way of doing it. You can see that crosses over. So it's like about 900. Let's see. A Z. That's a big one, maybe. 900. Uh, what else we got? Q. Oh, I can just leave that open. Q, W, 1000. So 1000 might be the answer. Unless I wanted to hang over, I guess. But I need to force them all to be monospace. So it may not look right, but at least I can force it. So what I'll do here... It may make my other character look a little funny, which is... I go, to, I go here and I go um, go to edit and no sorry element edit file sorry go to edit select and select glyphs worth outputting so that selects all the important glyphs which are all the ones that actually exist and then go to metrics and set width so I want them all to have the same width which will make them mono spaced. And so I'll just choose a thousand. I'm just playing with the numbers and hit OK. And you can see it actually goes and changes everything, which looks like some get squished and some don't. OK. Um, I can actually go view the one, I, the glyph I put in there. Okay. 27.6F to see if it looks funny. And it may. Yeah, look at that. It's Mine's kind of big, huh? So, in that case, it's like I just have it too big. So here I can right click on it and say, I think I can change, do I get info? Yeah, click get info, which actually gives you the point right there. 
And so I don't want that lower, right? And I want that 125. And let's see, let's just divide it by half. So that's 14, which would be 13, which is 600, 650, 660 maybe. Yeah, not bad. And then I can go next, which gets to the next point. And I could do 660. And then go next, which, let's see, 330 maybe. Next. The ones on the bottom are probably fine. Next, next, and 330. That kind of shows you you could tweak these fonts if you wanted to individually too, which is a lot of hard work, but. Okay, so now it looks like it fits a little better, but yeah, here's what it is. So I'll do that. Now, one of the tricks though here that I found, and I'm by no means a font expert, is you have to kind of force this a little bit more to be monospace. So they all have to actually be the same width, but you have to tell it again some way. Fonts are complicated. So you can click on Element, go to Font Info, go to OS2, go to Panos, or Panos, I don't, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, and then go to, what is it? Proportion. Go to Proportion, pull down, and go choose Monospaced. That's important for some reason. And click OK. So now we're ready to output the font. So here I'll make a new folder, so I don't want to overwrite this old one. I'll just leave it in a new folder. And so now I can go File, Generate Fonts. And I want it to be a true type font. I think the rest of it's fine. And click Generate. It always has some little weird issue it comes up with, but I just still want to just kind of bypass it. Click Yes. Click Generate. And, oh, I did that wrong. I said to the wrong directory. So I'll do it again, I guess. Generate fonts, true type, and then I want to go to, well, I guess it, well, I guess that might be okay, because I actually generate it in the fonts folder. Normally I wouldn't do that. I'd generate it on the desktop and copy it over, but I guess technically it's in the fonts folder now, so it's kind of where it should be. I don't know if it'll like that or not. But let me go to the desktop. Let me go home, desktop, and new folder. And I want that. Yeah. Try again. Generate fonts. Go to desktop. Go to new folder. And generate. And generate, and now we've got it. So I may, I don't know if this is going to be good or not. Yeah, see, it doesn't register as being in there because like you have to drop it or something. We'll see if I mess this up. So now I'll take the new font, drag and drop it. It should install it. So now it's installed, and it should be mono space, it should have the right width. Well, I should do the right width, but they're all the same width. So now if I open up a terminal, it should work. So I'll go to Options, Text, Select, and there it is. Shows up, and click OK, and Apply, and Save. And it may look super hideous, but the font actually works. And so it is monospace, and so um, I would imagine what you really would want to do is you probably want to take some font that already is monospace that doesn't work and run this procedure to fix it. Or it could be you want a weird font to display, but you can see most fonts that aren't monospace shouldn't, they're not going to line up right unless you're going to do a lot of tweaking. Um, but it's nice to know you could. Anyway, so that's um, kind of the end of this. So that's how you can use FontForge to tweak pretty much any font so that you can make it monospaced and make it actually work for Sigwin. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. 
If you did, please give it a like. To subscribe, just click the subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Twitter under the handle at whiteboardcoder.com. View any code I may have thrown up as a gist uh, at GitHub under the username Denver, or check out my blog site at whiteboardcoder.com.